All right, y'all. Good morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you're tuning in. I'm grateful to have you here. And we got the great Thomas Soul in the building today. And like a lot of folks, including myself, he may be a supporter of Big 45, Donald Trump, after it's all said and done. So this is going to be a doozy, I'm sure. Stay till the end if you want to hear my input and perspective. Let's get it popping. This is the mandatory subject, Donald Trump. During the presidential campaign, you wrote a column, this is when you still had your column, that appeared under, under the headline, Choose Trump, He'd Be Easier to Impeach. <laughs> and you wrote that, that voters faced well. a choice between, I'm quoting you, two out-of-control people, one of whom is going to be president. And you said since Hillary Clinton would be the first woman chief executive, she'd be very difficult to impeach, but Trump would be easier to kick out, so vote for Trump. Uh now that he's been in office for a year, what do you make of him? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting. <laughs> oh, gosh. You know, uh, let me say that, that just recently, Walter Williams sent me a, a, a video of Donald Trump in his mid-30s being interviewed. Rest in peace to Walter. Uh, and so I've had to uh, back off on one of the things I've said, which is that uh, Trump is someone who has simply never grown up. He was very grown up in his mid-30s. <laughs> Speaking of retrogression. And, uh, and it's scary because how many people are more mature in their mid-30s than they are at age 70? Not many. All right. And, and given the trend line, uh, wh how optimistic should we be about his uh, becoming more grown up as time goes on? All right. All right. But in terms of, of the people he's uh, surrounded himself with, I think on the whole, they're a better bunch than either of the last two presidents had. So he has very good people. I think of uh, Jim Mattis at the uh, uh, defense, uh, for you know, sure. Uh, but 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 other people are around him, and the question is, is he going to listen to them? All right. Let me play you a brief excerpt of Donald Trump himself. This is from the State of the Union address this past January. This will be my first time again. Something I'm very proud of. African-American unemployment stands at the lowest rate ever recorded. <laughs> He's a white supremacist. He don't like black folks. Okay. Lies. Oh, my. He, he, he produces a statistic. Maybe the statistic isn't quite right. Either. Maybe no, it is. It is. It is. Yes. And there you see a shot. You see Republicans standing and applauding. And there you see a shot of Democrats who are sitting on their hands, including many members of the Black Caucus yes. in Congress. What do you make of that? What's that tell you? That, as with so many other groups around the world, the leaders of groups that are lagging are often themselves the, one of the biggest handicaps of those groups. Because they have to depict the problems uh, in ways that will allow them to play the role of rescuers. And so there'll be no talk about how you can do this or that for yourself. Mm. There'll be talk about what we can get the government to deliver for you. Evil. And usually that, that, that's a lot of words and, and things that have bad effects. And that's true not only with blacks in the United States. It's true of uh, people in uh, the lower income people in England and, and elsewhere. Yeah. Wolves in sheep's clothing. That's what they are on the left side. A lot of people on the left side, not all, I, sh I should say, but a lot of them, they want to front like they're, they're the hero. They want to front like they got your best interest, but they'll also tell you at the same time that you can't do it without their help, that you can't do it on your own. And there's no accountability on that side whatsoever. You can do all things through Christ who gives you strength, but they want to quiet it down and act like God's dead. God ain't dead. God is as strong as ever. God is greater than me. He's greater than you. And you can do all things when you keep looking to him. Is life going to be hard? Is is, is absolutely is it going to be easy most certainly not but is it worth it in the long run can you achieve success can you achieve financial freedom or just peace of mind which should be the ultimate goal and to take care of your family and to love everybody around you a hundred thousand percent but the people on the left don't want to don't want you to believe that they, they don't want you to stray away from them because that's how they they stack their pockets that's how they take care of themselves and it, it's it's demonic it's evil it, it's a horrible thing so i love people like thomas soul when he unveils the curtain when he shows you what's really going on and he it takes a very wise person to to take a step back and say you know what i was wrong when you can humbly say that you were wrong and admit it with such grace as he just did you become full of knowledge that eclipses 
all egotism, all anything like that. And I applaud Thomas Sowell. He's truly a national treasure. The world needs more people like Thomas Sowell. And it's kind of sad that he's getting up there in age, but we're all going to die at some point. None of us are going to last forever, but I think he's he's very unappreciated. And that's why I watch these videos. I learn from him and I always put it in front of my audience because you know the mainstream media isn't talking about Thomas Sowell. You know they're not putting him on display because he's he's ruining the narrative. He's flipping the script and showing you like, no, 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 I'm black. I'm, I'm one of the most well-renowned economists and just great minds of our time. And I, I'm going to tell you what's really going on, not what the, the media wants you to think, because they're going to stack their pockets because they want you to lean on them and, and lean on their understanding and not lean on the Lord and, and get out of this worldly way of thinking. We need to think more godly and stop thinking at all these materialistic things and uh, having as many women or men or likes on social media is what matters because it doesn't at the end of the day. And if you want to elevate society, if you want to get somewhere, you got to love God first and foremost and then love your neighbor. And that means lifting each other up, telling people what is possible. And through all and through Christ, all things are possible. And you can say what you want about Trump, but at the end of the day, he shot it straight. He wasn't a, a politician. He was a businessman, a billionaire who handled businessman. That's what he did. He drained the swamp. And if he was given a second term, he would have done a even more phenomenal job than he did in his one term. I personally think he's the greatest president in my lifetime. I'm only, I'm only 27. I haven't seen that many, but y'all show me somebody across the board that has accomplished more in such a short amount of time who had more like feats and statistical uh, enhancements of, of our great country of America than Trump did. He didn't tolerate any nonsense, any intimidation from other, other world leaders. He was the leader of the free world and he did an awesome job, in my opinion. A good president does what's good for the people and when you elected Donald Trump, that's exactly what he did. Say what you want about uh, Obama and all these people, but Trump was actually out there for the people. He didn't just give you all these open-ended promises without trying his heart out to deliver on those. But y'all know me, I would be doing a disservice if I didn't hit y'all with some biblical soul food and take it over to scripture, the Bible, basic instructions before leaving earth. So Isaiah 40 verse 31 says, but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Put your trust in the Lord, not in these politicians, not in all the craziness that's going on in the world. Put your trust in the Lord because when you keep looking to him, he's going to work it all together for the greater good to serve his kingdom for his purposes. You might not be able to fathom why that is. You usually can't, usually can't take a step back and, and look at it from a uh, anything other than a mere moral way of thinking. You're not supposed to be able to. God is God. You are you. I am I. That, that is what it is. So you just got to keep putting your trust in the Lord and not in these worldly ways of thinking. Is it okay to, to vote for a certain side? Absolutely. I, I vote for the side that, that values life, that stands on the most biblical principles versus the other. That's what I vote on. At the end of the day, God puts whoever in power for a reason. Only, they're only serving for a season, whether it's four years, it's eight years. God puts them into office and allows them to go into power to unveil whatever story it may be. That's what we see going on with Biden. We see how corrupt that, that sort of way of thinking is. And that's what I think God is putting him and allowing him to run the country for. He ain't really running the country. He's running it straight to the ground. He's not even coherent. And they don't even do live interviews with this man Biden anymore. So Sleepy Joe is just there. He's just a scapegoat, a figurehead, in my personal opinion. But I digress. Isaiah 41 verse 10 says, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And then 1 Corinthians 1 verse 10 says, I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. So let's come together in love. Let's come together in compassion for the human race. No matter who's in office, we can still lift up society. We can still disagree and find ways to agree to find common ground and thrive in this world. We only get one life. We're on the right side of the grass right now. Breathe in life, count your blessings, and keep it pushing. But but as usual, I'm getting into a long rant and I go all day long. I'm sure you don't got that sort of time. So before you roll out, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. So you'd be notified anytime I post a video. Get you some Christian merch like I'm rocking right now, made by my beautiful wife over in her Etsy store. I'll link it in the description and the pinned comment. We got a ton of different designs, a run of sizes, all different colors and, and everything you need. We got it over there. So go show some love and support the channel by buying some shirts, some hoodies, whatever it may be. Either way, whether you do that or not, I still love you. I'm appreciative. I'm glad to have you in my corner and allow me to spread the good news and share the gospel. Until next time, I love y'all. I'm praying for you. Godspeed. I'm gone.